When it comes to camera apps for shooting better video, there's one app which stands out. This app has been around for years. Indeed, this app can lay claim to having been one of the main enablers of top-level smartphone filmmaking. I'm talking, of course, about Filmic Pro. Would Sean Baker have made Tangerine if this app didn't exist? Difficult to say for certain, but I think we can say it would have been a lot less likely. For this reason, Filmic Pro got a huge head start and has maintained that lead five years after the release of Tangerine. If you've only heard of one video shooting app, it's probably going to be Filmic Pro. But it's not perfect and while I use it happily nearly every day, I'm always curious about alternatives. A few months ago I made a video comparing a few other video apps, such as the Moment app, but they've now stopped supporting the Android version. There's also Open Camera and the very similar Hedgecam 2, both free apps for Android, and they're both pretty good too. Yes, you can set manual exposure and focus with both those apps. There's also manual camera and Adobe Premiere Rush as well. But none of these apps really compete with Filmic Pro when it comes to the sheer depth of features combined with a strong user interface. But recently, an app called MC Pro 24 frames per second or MC Pro 24 FPS has made a good stab at snatching the lead from Filmic Pro. And in this video, I'm going to compare the two apps and see which one comes out on top. Filmic Pro seems better organized and more intuitive, but that could be down to the fact that I know Filmic Pro very well, while I've only just started getting used to MC Pro 24 FPS. To my eyes, the new app isn't quite as nice to look at, even though they do use similar adjustment wheels, focus on the right, exposure on the left. I think this is because the MC Pro designers have decided to put more controls in the main screen, which perhaps clutters it a bit. Then again, it's quite nice to have some features easily accessible. For example, you can easily toggle around the various orientations. Auto-rotate is the default, but by tapping this button you can cycle through the options. So it makes it nice and easy to quickly lock the app into landscape, for example. This button at the top left makes it very easy to select from your phone's available cameras. It took me a while to discover the record button, but it's here top right with the record counter inside, which is quite a nice space saving idea. While you're getting familiar with the record button, check out the dropped frame counter right next to it. This counter should let you know live how many frames have dropped during a recording. Focus is controlled using the wheel on the right of the screen, just like Filmic Pro. The top selector button allows live focus while recording. Note that when in live focus mode, the wheel slides in and the focus distance marker becomes a focus distance meter, letting you know the distance the focus is at at any given time. Another nice attention to detail type feature. Next is touch focus, which allows you to set focus depending where you touch the screen. Below that is manual focus, which means you can use the focus wheel before and during recording. Below the focus controls, the plus sign in a circle switches to zoom mode. Now the wheel controls the camera's zoom. Again, it took me a while to work out how to access manual exposure controls. I spent about five minutes tapping those three dots before I worked out you need to swipe right to left. And somewhat counterintuitively, you need to swipe right to left again to close them again. Now you open up the manual shutter speed and ISO controls. The arrows above and below the ISO allow you to adjust the ISO one stop at a time. Alternatively, you can use the wheel to adjust in smaller amounts. To adjust shutter speed, you need to use the three arrows surrounding the setting. Up and down will move the shutter in multiples depending on the frame rate, but the right arrow toggles between that and an alternative multiple. For example, you might have the frame rate set to 30 frames per second. If you want to stick with the 180 degree rule, then you'd opt for a shutter speed of 1 60th. But MC Pro 24 FPS allows you to choose 1 50th instead. Now this is something I have discovered is quite important. Really, we would prefer the flexibility to alter shutter speeds. Reason it's important is, if you're in Europe, artificial lights can flicker at 50 hertz, which then causes strobing if you shoot at 1 60th of a second shutter speed. So we'd rather shoot at 1 50th in that case. 
The beauty of an electric shutter means we no longer have to be restrained by the limits of physical film cameras. I should be able to have a shutter speed of 147.634 or something if I want. All I'm doing is telling the camera how long to keep the sensor switched on for, which in turn determines the amount of motion blur. So if we want to shoot at 24 frames per second with a 150th shutter speed, there's no reason why we shouldn't have access to that. And the reason I'm making such a big deal over this is that one of the main reasons I would switch to MC Pro 24 frames per second, with this app I can shoot at 24 frames per second and not have to worry about artificial light strobing because I can switch to 150th shutter speed. The middle tab of three at the bottom of the screen opens up a menu. Here you can set frame rate, resolution and bit rate. While Filmic Pro has different controls for each setting, MC Pro 24 FPS combines frame rate and resolution. Select frame rate and then choose the resolution from the list below. Rather than 4K, 2K, 1080p, it lists the resolutions available in their exact pixels. Again, while Filmic Pro has a graphic representation of the ratios, MC Pro 24 FPS allows you to choose from the pixel sizes. For example, 3024 by 3024 pixels gives you a 1 by 1 ratio. To film at higher frame rates, MC Pro 24 FPS is a bit more complicated than Filmic Pro. But at first it seemed I could not shoot above 30 frames per second, even though Filmic allows me to shoot at 30, 60, 120 and 240 frames per second. Higher frame rates are available at lower resolutions only though. But once I disabled GPU, I was given access to 120 and 240 frames per second. A setting I've never seen before allows me to shoot with the GPU or without it. When I select with GPU, a message tells me this may limit the color space to Rec 601 and limit stabilization too. Some video shooting capabilities are improved by disabling GPU, others disabled. Why would we want to use this setting? Well, without GPU, more resources are used for smoother recording. In addition, without GPU, some devices can record in 10-bit color. When switched on, GPU is used for color grading on the fly or for functions available only with GPU, such as crop or de-squeeze. In the same menu, below the frame rate and resolution is a long list of settings. There are settings for depth of field adapters, anamorphic lenses, switch between H.264 and H.265 codecs, bitrate, noise reduction and so on. And many of these will be familiar to us from Filmic Pro or other apps. Note after disabling GPU, certain settings become unavailable, like D-Squeeze video for example. One very interesting setting claims to allow us to record in a fixed frame rate, in brackets experimental. The MC Pro 24 FPS app allows you to set bit rates well over 100 megabits per second, all the way up to 500 megabits per second. However, over 100 megabits per second, the tab turns red, which I presume indicates the user does so at their own risk, or that there will be some kind of issue there. Probably your device isn't capable of shooting above that level. Some devices using the MC Pro 24 FPS app can choose constant bitrate too. Now, this is less compressed and therefore higher quality, in theory. The white balance control is accessed using a button at the top labeled Auto. Tap this to open the white balance control. Here you can alter the white balance manually in a similar way to Filmic Pro, as well as similar presets. However, setting how the white balance locks is done in another menu. To the left of the white balance button is a settings cog. Tap that to open another long list of settings. And some way down is an AWB, auto white balance, auto lock. So you can switch between locking white balance completely or only at the start of recording. Again, not as user-friendly as Filmic Pro, but the setting is there if you don't mind looking for it. I think Filmic 
Pro does a better job with white balance, the way it's displayed, especially as you can see the Kelvin number and the tint number. In MC Pro 24 FPS, you can also do the same for auto exposure, which is something you can't do with Filmic Pro. Scrolling down this list, you can see a lot of other settings, dealing with everything from logging to storage and screen brightness. MC Pro 24 FPS has a range of log color profiles, but I know many smartphone videographers love to use log profiles combined with LUTs or lookup tables, so this app is really for you guys because on the MC Pro 24 FPS website, they have made available technical lookup tables for all the log profiles. Using these, you can convert log video to Rec. 709. So while Filmic Pro does have the option to shoot with their log version 2, you have to pay extra for that, and there's less choice of different profiles too. Another problem I have when using Filmic Pro is when I'm using conversion lenses mounted with a clip, or filters like an ND filter, variable ND. If you want to mount that with a clip, nearly always the clip covers the exposure control. I've even had to customize a clip, trimming it so it doesn't cover the controls. MC Pro 24 FPS has a control where you can resize the user interface. Tapping this all the way to minus 20 pushes the controls inwards. When I do this, it makes getting to the controls a lot easier. In Filmic Pro and other apps, we usually shoot in 8-bit color. There are some apps which do allow 10-bit. I believe the native LG app allows it. But depending on your device, MC Pro 24 FPS also allows you to shoot in 10-bit color. 10-bit will also create bigger files and demand more from your processor when editing. If 10-bit color is available on your device, it should appear below the anti-banding setting. While Filmic Pro allows you to toggle stabilization on and off, MC Pro 24 FPS gives you more options. There's off, optical, digital, as well as optical and digital combined. Again, whether this is available to you will depend on your device and how the app works with it. This is a pretty cool setting because usually we would prefer to use optical stabilization over digital. MC Pro 24 FPS has many great features. It's perhaps a good app to try once you have got familiar with Filmic Pro, which is easier to use in my opinion. MC Pro 24 FPS is quite cluttered with a lot of features, which will require quite some time to get used to and to fully understand. Using it is a bit like solving a puzzle. Switching on GPU allows some features but disables others. Switching off GPU does the same. Some features are now greyed out and others become accessible. So you might spend a lot of time switching things around, trying to work out how to get the feature you want. But there's certainly some great and useful features. Just simple practical things like being able to adjust the shutter speed without being locked into the 180 degree rule. When it comes to features which get your attention, like 10-bit color for example, we need to be cautious. You might technically be able to shoot 10-bit color with your smartphone, but the important question is how well does the app perform this task? It's not enough to just say, wow, 10-bit color on your smartphone. I mean, I can bolt a rocket onto my car, but that doesn't make it into a spaceship. Just like traveling to Mars, shooting nice looking videos requires so many different skills and specs that combine together to create something special. In conclusion, I think I would end up using both these apps. If I want to shoot slow motion, I can choose Filmic Pro, and if I need more flexible shutter speeds, I guess I can boot up MC Pro 24 FPS. I think they're both very good apps, to be honest. I think it's worth a try, but again, as we search for the perfect app, we looks like we haven't found it. It's not the perfect camera app, but I don't. I wouldn't say it's better than Filmic Pro, but it does do some things differently, and it does do some things better, and other things it doesn't do so well. So up to you to decide whether to use both or one on the other. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and I'll see you in the next video.